What's a transformer? Let's talk about that. Especially when we deal with ideal transformer. So let's take a picture. Let's say we have a transformer. And the way we draw a transformer, we put a dot on that's the polarity, we put a straight line to indicate that's an ideal one. And here's my diode. And this is my load resistor right there. Ideal diode. We'll use ideal for now. That I'll hopefully I remember to talk about them. When you start talking about transformer, the first thing you want to give is the ratio of the number of turns. What does that mean? Think of a transformer like if you have a block of steel here, metal here, square one with a hole in the middle of it, and we take and we wrap the wire around it. These are turns. Each time is a loop. And this end it goes like this. The N1 to N2 is how many turns on this end in relation to turns on that end. So this is where the N1 is and this is the N2. So we found out there is a relationship between the voltage here. And again, notice how I define the dot here as positive and the dot here as positive. The ratio of V1 to V2, it is the same as the ratio of N1 to N2. And what happens if these dots are reversed? That means on this end, the dot looks like this. And this is the V1. But on the other end, the dot was here, and the plus here and the minus there. So notice here, for V1, the dot was positive. For V2, the dot was negative. So in this case, the relationship of V1 to V2 is going to be negative N1 to N2. So if the dots here have the same sign, if they're both positive or they're both negative, the relationship is this one. If one of them is positive and the other one is negative, it doesn't matter which one, the relationship is this one. So let's take a problem here and go through it and see what will happen. Here is my transformer. Plug into the wall. This one you attach to the ground. You should ground your outlet there. You have three plugs there, one to the ground, one positive, one negative. And there is my dot here, and there is my V1. I'm labeling that as V1. And there is my other coil here. Um, notice the dots have the same polarity, they're both positive. And let me use an ideal diode here. And this is our Sibel. And let's assume this plugged into an outlet in the USA, which means you have 120 volts peak value. Frequency in the USA is 60 hertz. So my input actually coming out of the wall will look like this. It's a sine wave, has a peak of 120 down here, negative 120. Do we always get 120? Not really the range between 105 to 125, so you could have 110. But the range we get between 105 to 125, 
our frequency in the USA is 60 Hertz. So here's what happens. We're going to give you the ratio of the number of turns, 5 to 1. The primary has five turns when you compare it to the secondary one here. But when they said five to one, what they're really talking about is the RMS voltage. So the ratio of V1 RMS to V2 RMS is equal five to one. or V1 RMS equals 5 times V2 RMS. They gave us this voltage, that's the RMS value, 120 volts equals 5 times V2 RMS. So V2 RMS is equal to 120 divided by 5, that's 24 volts. That's the RMS. I'm trying to find VLDC. What is that equal to? Well, I can't find VLDC till I know the peak value. So what is V2 peak? If you remember from previous video, V2 or VRMS, doesn't matter, V2, V1, is V peak for a sine wave divided by the square root of 2. So if I do the math, that's the, the voltage, peak voltage cross this second, or V2 here, is going to equal to 24 times the square root of 2. And where's my calculator for that? times the square root of 2. That's roughly 34 volts. So what is my VDC value? It's V peak over pi. If you assume it's ideal. Because if it's ideal, the voltage drop here is 0. So this is in parallel with this. So you're getting a voltage here of what? 34 divided by pi. Divide that by pi. Let me find pi somewhere here. I'm sure it's looking at me, I just don't see it. Oh, I see. Divided by pi. Oh, that's ln. Divided by pi. And it's 10.8. Again, what does that mean? Looking at it, this is what we see. If you're looking at VL, if you graph VL, VL is going to be a sine wave with the peak value of 34. Zero, up to pi, then it starts at two pi, repeats itself. So the peak value is 34. This is that area there. The question is what height, what DC value I can use to give me the same area? And that's the 10.8. You're going, boy, you're missing a lot of stuff from it. What happened to all that? Because remember, that DC value goes all the way to here. So I'm gaining all of this. That's supposed to compensate for that piece I'm missing right there. So if I take the 2 pi and multiply it by this, that should give me the same area as this one. So where do we use transformers? 
we use them if you want to create a full wave rectifier you can either use transformer or you can use a bridge diode so the next two videos we're going to talk about making a full wave rectifier in one of them will be using a transformer and in the other one will be using a bridge diode there see you soon